Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. All right, grade nines, uh, we're on the third last topic for our section with electricity and, um, or should I say energy and change, we're on the third last topic, which is um, safety with electricity, okay? This is a very valuable topic because obviously this does um, um, spill over into actual real life. Uh, we're all used to having plug points, so we all work with electricity on a daily basis, charging our cell phones, putting the kettle on, uh, maybe operating the microwave, opening the fridge, um, putting the stove on, um, using any type of appliance that requires electrical power. We are used to that. So um, it's important that we obviously keep um, safety or keep ourselves safe because we, unlike electric eels, we cannot harbor electricity or do very well with it. We don't work well with electricity. Okay, we have, we have to actually put measures and safety practices in place. Okay, so for starters, with the safety practices, we're going to look at safety practices, of course, in parallel circuits. Okay, in parallel circuits. Okay, the next thing you're also going to have a look at is um, overloading. Uh, at the proper L there. We'll understand these terms eventually. And um, we're also going to have a look at fuses. Okay, circuit breakers. And earth leakages. Now, earth leakages is something that I definitely have come across uh, a lot because I actually need to fix one in my own house. Okay. Oh, it's earth leakage systems rather, not leakages. Okay. Um, as safety devices. I'll just extend it all the way till the end of the line here. Okay. As well as we'll have a look at obviously illegal. Connection. So we'll look at what different fuses are, circuit braces, breakers, sorry, and earth leakage systems and how they're used, obviously, uh, with, um, can, uh, they are looked at, obviously, with safety, with uh, electricity. But let's have a look at the first one, which will be the parallel circuits. Okay, so that's the diagram. That's what we're going to go with. Okay, now, of course, just as a reminder quickly, uh, before we move on, is that in a parallel circuit, the current will flow through the closed parts and not through the open parts. So in other words, if you close a switch, you complete the circuit. Current can only flow now through that connection because there's a bridge. Okay, if there's no bridge, you can't cross over water. Okay, but if it's a bridge, you can. Of course, you can cross over water, but with a car, I mean. Okay, so if we consider a simple circuit, let's draw a simple circuit diagram maybe. Okay, so let's say one that we we'll, should be used to seeing soon. So we've got a little power source there. You know, let's put a little switch here, open switch. Okay, here's the clear. Cool. Okay, straw, uh, here's a bulb, there's another bulb, okay, oh, I don't know what happened there, okay, so, here we go, somewhat nice simple circuit here, and it's parallel we can see and um, it's got a switch which we see there and it's got two light bulbs in parallel if the switch is closed then obviously the lights going to operate right so if I just draw another color to show the closed switch so this is a closed switch here with the blue there obviously the current can now flow Poof. okay uh, now when the light bulb like we see there is added in parallel with the first bulb so it's connected that there is a path to flow through the first bulb or a path to flow through the second. In other words, over here, let's use, keep using the blue dot for current. So let's say the current comes here, okay? Like a car to a toll gate, okay? Or maybe, or a, or maybe somebody at a crossroad that can go either left or right, okay? So your current can either decide to go up this way 
or you can decide to go down that way it's got options okay and you can choose how it wants to go if the bulbs have equal resistance it'll split equally if they don't then current will split obviously in the amount that the resistor allows current to flow through okay now in a parallel circuit both bulbs will glow at the same brightness okay since they receive the full uh, circuit voltage which is coming from the power source that we have here which in this case could be a battery or from the circuit board in our house or whatever okay uh, in South Africa in the circuits in our house apparently um, is 220 volts that's what we get okay now in a parallel circuit every load connected in a separate path receives the full circuit voltage if I add a third bulb to the circuit it will also glow at the same brightness because it also receives the same voltage which is 220 in South Africa okay however one special concern in a parallel circuit is that the current from the source increases each time another load is added to the circuit okay therefore it is very easy to keep adding loads or plugging them in parallel if we keep doing that we overload the circuit so more current must flow than what the circuit can safely handle so when we think of overloading okay we must think of too many plugs per point or too many plugs in one point okay we'll have actual uh, look at a graphical representation of that in just a second okay so that's overloading let's actually just go have a look at that in just a second okay not the clearest picture ever I think but as we can see there lots of plugs being plugged into one point okay this is a typical scenario we got someone's cell phone in here we got the heater plugged in here now we know a heater when we looked at heaters does obviously require quite a bit of current um, lots of other two two prong plugs and whatever this is just a very nasty scenario okay because it's easy in this case especially those plugs that have two that you can stick two prong two two prong plugs in okay there's more than one outlet for it and also multi plugs okay which kind of gives the away the note the, the notion of um, parallel circuit because you can plug your TV in there and your cell phone in there and guess what they will charge or they will operate independently of each other obviously if you switch the main source off which is the wall socket then obviously no current's going to flow but I mean current when they when it is on current will flow your TV will operate at a good brightness and whatever because it's getting current for the for itself and your cell phone will charge optimally because it's also getting current for itself because obviously the current can split however it's dangerous because we're overloading it okay um, in other words we are requiring more current to flow than what the circuit can safely handle not saying that it can't handle it it can but we're talking about safely handle okay so that's just an uh, example of overloading and we probably might have had a look at this very early on maybe in junior school we might have been made aware of this or we're just making aware of it again now in high school okay now um, let's just go back quickly I don't know if anybody has heard of something that's called uh, short circuiting okay let's come over here short circuit or a, a device or something short circuiting so short circuits or short circuiting can happen if the insulation because all wires in appliances are insulated right so insulation that's covering the electrical wires okay um, in an appliance all right uh, becomes worn out now I have seen an example of a uh, of short circuit in front of my face okay um, I had a sandwich presser of some sort it was the brand was called snackwich 
instead of saying sandwich, it was snackwich. So you make yourself cheese and tomato and you put it in there and then it basically, when you press it down, it basically cuts the sandwich in triangles and melts your cheese and everything like that. All that nice little stuff. Anyway, that's not the important thing I'm trying to go for here. What I'm trying to go for here is that the it was unbeknown to me at the time that part of the wire had become stuck inside the sandwich presser. So obviously it heats up, right? So it the heat of the sandwich presser or the device melted the insulation around the wires and melted also therefore the smaller insulation around the copper wires and they had become exposed. And long story short, there was a loud explosion noise like uh, and I actually saw electricity voltage and current fly at my face uh, almost like I saw lightning in front of my face because lightning you see is obviously electricity it's the same thing uh, it was very scary uh, I was too far away for it to catch my face so I didn't shock or anything I um, I was fine I didn't get any burns or anything neither did my mom who was standing next to me in the kitchen but I've seen a short circuit happen Okay, very dangerous okay now obviously as I mentioned the copper wire became exposed okay <clears throat> because current is flowing through and obviously heat is energy so obviously the current and the voltage which is energy being lost to the form of heat of course triggered of course um, the current to flow out of those copper wires obviously at my face or yeah because they became exposed okay the short circuit has much less resistance than the appliance so it will carry a very large current and when that current heats the wire it causes the insulation to burn and can possibly start a fire luckily when that explosion happened everything in my house tripped the earth leakage lights went off and whatever so there was no current to further go on so we just quickly disconnected the um quickly disconnected the short circuits or the the plug from the wall socket switched everything back on the mains got rid of the appliance because this was pretty much busted didn't want to use it again okay so up until then we have always just made melted cheese or toasted cheese sandwiches uh, on the stove little hack it's much better <clears throat> all right now electricity obviously we know is a very useful uh, resource it makes our lives easier okay uh, however we know based on this little short circuiting definition that we've looked at now it obviously can be very dangerous okay if we use it carefully okay so the question is what can the uh, misuse of electricity cause question okay what could it cause uh, anybody care to maybe answer what could it cause the misuse of electricity people don't use it correctly or safely what could it result what fires fires excellent okay anything anybody else with another guess balls. ah sorry kayla what did you say i said balls i said balls does that even make sense? Never mind. No, I actually... It can cause, like, trips. Okay, so, um... Trips? Okay, cool. So, obviously, that's, um... Um... A loss of current. In homes. Which also will lead to, like, further circuit damage. Couldn't it also like cause electric shock like to a person? Okay, there we go. So obviously if, it's, if you get electrical shock that could obviously cause uh, injuries or even kill people. Okay. Um, and as a result of a shock. As a result of shocking. Okay. Um, 
my um, uncle was one time cleaning his pool and he obviously the um, little pool sweeper with the, the pool broom that you sweep the bottom of the pools with to get all the, the the dirt up off the floor so you can catch it with a net or something like that and clean the pool um, whatever anyway long story short um, the pole metal pole touched the electric wire his own electric wire on the wall and it um, obviously it touched him and obviously he was holding the pole and he managed to let go of the pole but he shocked like crazy um, oh. yeah it was uh, it was quite uh, it wasn't funny it, I couldn't even I still can't laugh about it today I was because I was in the pool I could have actually lost my uncle that day had it sure. gone anywhere else he shocked on the electric fence so yeah the injuries so why wasn't the insulation on there uh i think no i think nobody puts look the pole was very long like unnecessarily long and i think he just got careless of the fact that uh, you know no metal p uh, pool poles actually have insulation on them to be honest um they just metal exposed and there's no insulation on the electric fence because you want people that want to break into your house to actually get shocked <laughs> so um yeah he didn't have any injuries though it was just like a a, a, sh a shock but he obviously managed to let the thing go and, and and whatever it didn't it wasn't as violent of a shock what is insulation tape made out of um i th i if you feel like any appliance like you feel your kettle um the insulation around there because obviously the the cord will be black right so that's insulation feel insulation tape they kind of feel very very similar they kind of feel very similar like a plastic right and they meant to insulate so current can't flow through them so the tape was just measured as a because i mean they are, we already get cello tape right so let's get insulation tape made of the same or similar material to go and wrap around your appliances when wire show um just so you don't obviously cause shock so yeah okay and i always keep insulation tape handy with me like I, i'm holding it in my hand actually now it's in my jaw always keep it handy it serves other purposes as well like even just taping anything together it serves other purposes but anyway very strong tape very sticky all right um what else i mentioned please don't stick a naked wire into a plug all right um, a naked wire means there's no insulation covering it so just the copper parts of it don't stick it into a plug obviously you will shock don't 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 be silly um <clears throat> okay now to ensure that all electrical connections and appliances and tools are safe we use stuff as fuses circuit breakers and earth leakage systems so maybe let's start by taking a look at some fuses okay we had good pretty much a good discussion point over there so Let's start looking at what fuses are okay so fuses okay first of all it's a part of a circuit that will melt and stop the flow of current it will stop the flow if the current becomes too large because of a short circuit okay let's take some time to write that down cool <clears throat> now we've got that so when the fuse melts the circuit is broken and no current can flow okay so Let's maybe write that in shorthand. Fuse melts, circuit broken. No current can flow, which is better than having the current still flow and the appliance still work and you shocking. Okay, so this obviously stops a fire from breaking out because no short circuit, no fire. Okay now where are fuses found okay fuses are found in stoves um, they are found in uh, cars okay stoves definitely makes the most sense and also fuse boxes okay protecting homes okay uh, the wiring of our houses in our homes okay that's what they're used for okay so those are fuses okay great little piece of uh equipment let's see if we can find uh, some of us have never seen a fuse before 
uh, let's see if we can uh, have a look what Google can give us here alrighty let's see if we can see ah okay cool so many different ones that we can see here um, different types of fuses let's see if we can open this in a new tab and see how big the picture is please don't let it be a small one oh speak okay no I don't like that image ah, this is by far one of the place one uh, best ones blade fuses these fuses are found in cars by the way um, these fuses are found in cars these blade fuses that's how they look and again their purpose is that if the current becomes too large they will just melt all right just prevent a, a short circuit from occurring and obviously that stops the flow of the current so it's much better that that happens than anything else all right so is it so is it true that if you get shocked your hair like stands up in cartoons like in cartoons and stuff uh i've shocked before but i don't think i've shocked that much um no i don't think i've shocked that much no for my hair to stand up also i've never seen anyone die from a shock so i can't actually say okay do you want to try maybe okay Maybe cool. not oh, oh okay cool let's let's pick a victim exams okay well let's just pick a victim you know and then we can go ahead and shock them and see what happens uh, only problem with that is we can't bring them back to life if it goes wrong can't do that all right circuit breakers okay now circuit breakers are a more modern kind of fuse okay still counted as a fuse but it's a more modern okay now the wire is wound round iron to make an electromagnet okay okay so let's also write this down wire is wound round or around um, iron to make an electromagnet I think it's an electromagnet yeah if I'm using my articles correctly for an electro magnet all right now what happens here is when a short circuit happens the large current in the wire makes a strong magnet which pulls open the switch stopping the current from flowing now circuit breakers do not have to be replaced as fuses do so fuses currently have to be replaced especially those on a car you have to replace your fuses all the time trust me okay if the circuit does break then the switch only needs to be closed to complete the circuit again so that's quite nice if the circuit breaks with a um, circuit breaker um, which is also known by the way as trip switches okay that's a type of circuit breaker then you just need to close the switch again okay and you'll find them in the switch boxes so switch boxes uh, each parallel circuit in the house such as lights, plugs, stove, and geezer, uh, they do have a separate circuit breaker. Okay, so one of the things I believe is that when the short circuit happened in my home, everything just went off. It's because I have circuit breakers in my house, so all I had to do was switch on the earth leakage and everything like that, and then and all the the um, breakpoints in the house on my obviously my circuit board. With that all tripped, I just had to switch it back up again, and then worked so my circuit breakers are working and that kind of happened like how long that happened it happened when i was through school i was either grade 11 or 12 so that's even 2000 and uh 12 or 2013 so a long time ago okay cool uh let's have a look and see how circuit breakers look okay so what we have here is um domestic circuit breakers that we can um, which we probably might have in our own homes actually let's just um, have a look here at this one these are proper circuit breakers that all that happens is that obviously they will the switch will trip and then all we have to do is just switch back on again and they're real good which is fantastic 
Okay, absolutely fantastic. Okay, we'll call this um, circuit breakers in a home. We'll call that like a ring break or a ring main. Okay, um, we'll call them the ring main actually. Okay, um, and that's what we see in our houses actually. So this is like on your little circuit board or um, or in your house, which is, it's actually called a circuit breaker. Actually, you're not a circuit board. It's actually called a circuit breaker. Okay, so if anything goes wrong, just flip the switch or whatever, and it all works. It works out pretty good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think that's all to say about circuit breakers. To be honest, I don't think there's anything more we can say about that. Okay, um, so obviously your ha houses make use of parallel circuits, right? So the advantage of obviously that is that lights and plugs can be turned on and off without affecting the other lights or sockets. So we've got you got plug switch here on this little circuit board. You got for your plugs, you got for your main switch or whatever. We will shut down everything. But obviously, if you take your mains, if you leave your mains on, but you switch off the switches and the plugs and whatever, then of course you shut down the flow of current to those points in your house. Okay, so if you need to change a wall plug or whatever, or a, a switch in your room or whatever. You can just switch off those little things there and they should work just fine. All right. Now, earth leakage is the last little type of safety precaution. Um, it's used in many power tools and it's a, as a safety device. Uh, the reason why it's used is because you want to prevent the person from shocking when you're using a power tool. So a power tool such as a drill or a grinder, one of those power tools, um, my father was an engineer, so he used most of those. Um, it detects small stray voltages on the metal enclosures of electrical equipment and interrupts the circuit if a dangerous voltage is, of course, detected. Okay, many appliances also need more current than others, okay, such as a three pin plug. All right, so you get a two point plug for your cell phone because you don't need as much current. You get a two point plug for most of the flat screen TVs today. Okay, is you get a two point plug only. Okay, or two two pin plug for them. But maybe for a extension lead, there's a three pin plug. Okay, or for a kettle, there's a three pin plug. For an um an iron to iron your clothes, there's a three pin plug. Okay, now if you have a look at a three pin plug. Okay, if we have a look at the three pin plug, the three pin plug has built in safety devices such as an earth line connection. Okay, you'll know it because it has the color green and yellow. Okay, so let me explain this quickly. It's got a blue wire, which is um, your neutral. It's got a brown wire, which will usually be connected to a fuse. And well, they'll all be connected to fuses, sorry. Um, which is the brown wire is also known as the live wire and then you get the earth wire which is, of course is your yellow and green this is the color of the earth of course and then you'll have your cord holder which will be like your insulations or your big insulations to hold all the three wires together okay your brown is your live wire uh, N is your neutral wire and then you got your wire for your earth as well now each of the pins in the three pin power plug serves a separate purpose all right the live pin feeds power into an appliance so let's have a look at this one quickly the live which is the brown this feeds current to the appliance appliance then you go to blue which is your neutral Okay, the neutral uh, draws unused power back into the power source. Okay, and then you got your earth pin. Okay, which is the largest one. So your earth, 
choose your yellow and green. Hopefully, I don't have enough space for this one. Okay, yellow and uh, green. This is acts as a safety device. Okay, and I'll explain why. Acts as a safety device, which is connected via the plug to an earth cable in the ground. Okay, now this will direct the voltage into a safe ground, as it's called, so that the appliance user is not electrocuted. Let's read that again. Okay, the largest pin of the three would be the earth. Okay, and it's connected usually to the top pin because they appear in a bit of a triangle. This acts as a safety device as it is connected via the plug to an earth cable in the ground. Okay, and this will obviously direct voltage into safe ground so that the appliance user is not electrocuted. The earth cable has almost zero resistance. So if the metal casing of an appliance becomes charged due to a fault, the charge is safely discharged into the ground. Okay. And um, that's what the earth le leakage or the earth wire does in your appliance. So your appliance is actually also there to keep you safe. Thank you so much, Great Nights, for joining me on the session. <coughs> we will complete the session on um, the earth leakage uh, next week, as well as going through the next or the last little subtopic there, which is legal uh, connections. Please don't forget to like, comment on this video, as well as subscribe to our channel.